something that I should know about this new wind, a new wind that's gonna blow. Shabbat is the Jewish for Sabbath, and as we know it, it is from Friday at sundown and to Saturday at sundown. And it really is a part of the Jewish calendar where we are now, incidentally, in 5774, 5774. That is the year we are in once we follow the Jewish calendar. So we are going right back to where that calendar started. Rather than just having 2,000 years, what we call BC and AD. BC before Christ and AD after the actual start of the dominion of Christ. Because that is what has affected our very calendar. So it is the pivotal activity that has taken place in our universe. So we have got to recognize it and take from it what we can take to use for ourselves to get to our purpose. So, shalom means everything in perfect, upright order. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And Shabbat means that you are now using this time to reorient yourself to get back into the place where you can have everything in perfect of right order and nothing missing and nothing broken so how do you do that first of all you do just like how the creator does you say what he does says you do what he does you have the attitudes that he does you have the same goals and objectives that he does, and then you will get to Shalom. Easy, simple. 
But there are things that you have to do. You have to pay as you enter. You have to give your responsibilities. Uh, 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 or else you can't. Uh, 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 uh. Simple. Now, what did he do? On the seventh day, he rested. What did he rest from? Work. That's all he rested from. Work. He didn't rest from all the other activities. <laughs> so a lot of people think that on Shabbat, you must just do work, but you do not do work. You do not do anything else. You cannot enjoy yourself. You cannot make a lot of noise. You cannot. But guess what? The Creator was doing. A lot of people don't know him. It is in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. And when you read it, you know what it says? It says that he looked down and saw all the things that he had done. And all the things he had done and all the creation he had made was down there enjoying themselves and really doing everything that he wanted them to do. And so he decided to come down and interact with them. But guess what? On his way down, you know what he did? He started to dance. And he danced up a storm, just like my dance up a storm. And then he just did it. He did a poop leak. He did a cartwheel and a flip. You wonder, read it. It is right there in Zephaniah chapter 3. Chapter 3. Verse 17. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that a book in the heavenly writ was called the Zephaniah. I think it's about the Zephaniah, Haggai, Zachariah, Haggai, Zephaniah, something like that. But it comes down to the end. It's like the fourth or the fifth from the end. Anyway, so it go to the end where you have Matthew and you go back and you find it. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. And that was when our Creator was so excited over his creation and what he saw on the Sabbath when he looked down and saw that they were doing everything that they should be doing. He did a flip for a turn. And I'm here to tell you, I am not making this up. I researched it when I was studying Hebrew. And the word is, let me get it right this time, K-H-U-L. And it means doing a flip and a twirl and a spin and a jump all together. What is that but a poop a leak? All right. So now that we have the basis for what he did, we need to do the same. Now, what was he actually doing? Let's just analyze it. He was looking at all this fabulous creation. And he was saying, oh my goodness, I love it. This is great. He didn't say it's good. He said it's very good. He said, this is excellent. I have done so many masterpieces. I got to enjoy them. How did he enjoy them? He danced around and enjoyed them. And that is how we are to spend our Shabbats. First of all, I'm going to tell you how I spend mine. And then you can take any of them that you like, or you can get your own. Huh? Well, the first thing is not an option. Because the first thing has to be positive together with your Creator so that He can direct you. He can get rid of all the junk from the day before and He can show you how to really celebrate the Shabbat. The first rule is no work. So, guess what? I can't do any work, so any seminars and programs like this one that I do on Saturday and on the Lord's Day, I can't accept any fee for it. So it has to be done free. But, wait, but we're doing all of them free. But guess what? When take money start to run, you have to get paid for my other shoes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But I can't take any money. A Saturday show and Sunday show because that is a 
gift back. You don't have to take two years of rest, you know. Because guess what? I have so many dollars that I just decided to extend what is called the Sabbath rest into the permanent rest of being just reposed and relaxed into the presence. It's called seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And that means you have seven days rest. You don't mean that you don't get paid for the other five, you know. But the position of repose and relaxation and non-rushedness is there. Never be there. Always having time for what the Creator says you should do. So sometimes people call me up, you know, and they talk about, Lord, you know, we're busy, but well, you can't pay a little time for your so and so. I said, Excuse me, I am not ever busy. Because busy means bound under Satan's yoke. B U S Y. And guess what? Busy is Satan's biggest trap. You talk about the wiles of the devil, you think it is fornication and 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 and, 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 and all sort of things that pull you into some kind of things. <laughs> His number one trap is this structure. And the number one methodology is to keep you busy. When I discover that, my dear, I said, oh, and here am I busy? in full-time service, working with the church. I mean, every time the church door open, I am there and don't have time for nothing. But God was so good. Because I remember one time when we started at 6 o'clock prayer meeting at my church. I'm working there full-time now. I'm never from 8 o'clock until 8 o'clock. Because I go to work and then I stay to go to the church service. And there's no institute at six o'clock prayer meeting, which is half an hour from where I live, if I job. So I said to myself, what am I going to get this in? I'm going to squeeze this in. It means that I am going to and coming back from prayer meeting when I am supposed to do my exercises. I said, well, go on, I want to strike a bargain with you in a bag. I will go to prayer meeting on one condition. That during the time when I'm supposed to be doing the exercise, you will have to exercise the muscles and keep the muscle torn and everything. I said, you think you can do that? He said, piece of cake. But you can't drive to prayer meeting, you have a job. I was coming from Stone Hill, from Old Stone Hill Road. So every morning I would jog down from Old Stone Hill Road, that church, you know, to get down to the prayer meeting down at church and come. And I jog down. <laughs> this is about 30 years ago, you know, 29, 28. Jog down, man. And I said, God, you gotta get all these muscles into the right places. And when I come down, I'm in line for prayers, you know. <laughs> and when I get to prayer meeting, you know, Pray for one hour and then I jump back up. Well, I did that for two years and I had every muscle well told because I had made a bargain. That you have to do it that way. I said, You keep my muscles too. I come to pray with you. With the time I spent before the exercise. You can make those deals with God, you know. I tell you, it's just amazing what he does, right? Just change the laws of nature for you. He has done it so many times. So that is why you have to spend the first whatever of your Shabbat or your Lord's Day morning, if it is that, or whatever the day is. And I try and do it every day because guess what? It cuts down on the amount of detours 
and mistakes that I make because then I am following his imperfect. So I don't have any backtracking to do. I am always on target. So talking about target, we're 15 minutes in already. And uh -uh, it's time for a break. So when I come back, I'm going to just switch to all the other things that you have called in or contacted me about adjusting. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae2reggae.com. On reggae2reggae.com, we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. Wow, we're back again. And guess what? Why do I have this animal in my lap? Well, yesterday's show, I was talking about it is, it's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And somebody called me and said, It's not a lion. I said, I know that. Well, I said, It's a tiger. Well, somebody called you yesterday. I, I was talking to my daughter. Hi, Denise, in Canada. And I said to her, did you see? She says, what are you doing that with that big cat on the, on the set? I said, it's my lion of tribe of Judah. She says, that's not a lion, that's a cheetah. Don't you know that a lion has stripes and a cheetah has spots? I said, thank you, Denise. I will just let my chief viewers know that it is not a lion. But I don't care until somebody gives me a lion. This is my lion. And why is it important to be able to translate the things that are not into what you want them to be? Is because a lot of times you face issues. <laughs> Let me put them back here. Because sometimes I harass them so much. And sometimes you face issues in life that are not what you want. But guess what? You can learn to call those things that are not as if they were until they become. So one day, this animal is going to look, talk, walk, and everything like a lion. Either by somebody replacing it with a lion, or one day you're going to sit down and watch the show and just see just us all. I'm drumming, and then you see those things, the, the spots just disappear, and then it comes brown, and then everything. That is how life evolves. Oh. And so, part of Celebrate Life's mandate is to teach you how to move things from where they are to where you want them to be. Because, really and truly, that's what you do all the days of your life with no help from anybody. Because if you see something that looks blue and you continue calling it blue, it shall remain blue. But if you look at something that is blue and you call it red, one day it is going to change to red. And I don't care whether you get help from the creator or not, because guess what? You have been given creative capabilities by just using your mouth. I bet you never know that. You can have creative. That is one of the things, you know, that was given to you. Given to you by your creator, right? One, let me tell you something. I will tell you something about this outfit. You like it? I love it. Well, I don't even remember where I got it. Right? But, um... It either came from the thrift store or it was a gift. When I got it, it is so fabulous. I love it. It is a shower camis and it's Indian. And of course, it comes with this scarf. Remember, I told you on the Shabbats, I always wear an uh, ethnic outfit. Well, when I got it, it was on its way out. I will estimate that it was about 30 years old. And so it was covered with this fabric. This year, 
and um, um, not only around here, can you can watch these things you know you have to dry clean or you have to just turn them. The top, it was like this, you know, the top was so warm it was crystallizing. And the first time I wore it and I bend the elbow, it splits up. And then I bend the other elbow and it splits up. And so I went home and I cut off all the shear on the top and just left the line with the medium. And I've been wearing it like this for years. I think I've probably had it for about 13 years maybe or more. And one day I wore it out and when I got up, some of the beading was on the floor. So I went home to go and analyze what was happening. And the beading is now falling apart. So I said to my designer, Marie, you need to take a needle and thread and just tap back on this beading. So it stayed together for the show. Because it's the last time I'm going to be able to wear it. But I'm going to go home, cut off all of this part, and then get another piece of material and fix it back on top of it. Because I like it so much. Why am I telling you all this? It's not just to take my personal business well. It's so that you can understand as a Jamaican, you are the ace at turning your hand and making fashion. In Jamaica, we say, turn your hand and make fashion. That means you take whatever it is, garbage, thrift shop things, throw out stuff, and you can find something useful out of it to enhance your lifestyle. It is my most fabulous outfit. And it will continue to be. Unless you have someone that you want to throw it in my direction, I can show you how to turn those things into the most beautiful and useful things. It's a Jamaican thing, right? We can fix back anything. The only people I know better than that is the Cubans. When I went to Cuba, every time I was in Cuba, it was the most exhilarating thing. You ever hear somebody can take 1940 something car and then still running and then make all the parts? Well, I have a relative who I went to stay with, and his father at the time was driving a, a, a Fiat or a Lada. Uh, I think it must have been 50, 40, 30 years old. I don't know. But the gas tank was gone. So there was a gallon bo bottle on the inside, right down on the floorboard, boards with a hose going to the carburetor. So that was the gas tank. And the front windshield had a crack right across it and some break up, break up on the side. And it was patched with mastic. You know what that is? A black thing. So you had these black patches over it. And it didn't really have any clutch. But you have to learn the time the engine go and you just change the gear to come down when you want to stop. The brakes didn't work too well, but you know, if you move clutch down. Voila! And let me tell you something. We had the most exciting times in that vehicle touring around Cuba. And listen to me, you want to get something fixed by a Cuba, you can fix anything. Well, my juicer broke down, a cane juicer. This is a big iron tip. I just find a Cuba on the island, it's up in Manapan. I don't know if he's still here. But I just called him and said, look here, honey, X don't help me enough. And then just, I don't go to a machine shop or this is a Tony hand like fashion here. Because it is the most exciting thing when you can look back at the stuff that you made, that you fixed. You know, this is a part of you coming out into it. And that is what makes that celebratory. Right? You don't want to buy a new piece and a new piece and so manufactured outside of this country. None of that. On this program, I am not 
in any way promoting anything, manufactured anywhere else. When you take it, you use it for yourself and change your own your Jamaican eyes. That occurs highest degree of at starlight jewelry. Last week, I said I need some pearls that are white for the ones that are sort of creamy. And I went and bought a whole bunch of pearls. And I went and bought a little fishing line. And I go up to the jeweler and I said, honey, you know who I said? He's been my jeweler for 30 years. Can I say to him? I said, look, I want a double strand. So string the fishing line put two cats on it. And I said, so these, I want a bunch. Right? So you make a little ring with five pearls, and you take a knob and you push it through the middle so I can put it on at the back. Voila! It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. $1.50 per. Everything cost me $2.50 for my whole set. But guess what? What's the most important part? It's like I really came out of my creative innermost being that was put in me by my creator. Remember, you know, when you are made in his image, it is the most important thing that he has transmitted to you, the creative force. Because after he had given you everything that you need, you know what he says? You have authority, power, over all the fish of the sea, all the fowls of the air, and every little thing that creeps upon the earth. And that means all the creepy crabbies that you don't like. That includes all the little germs and the things that are around. You have power over them. That is why he says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. Fear nothing, not sickness, not animals, not plants, not anything that's flying, nothing, not even bacterial germs. Fear nothing because you have been given a spirit of power. That means authority over every living thing. And even what they, you have authority over it. That creative force is what has been breathed into you when you became a living soul. But it's not just for waiver. You've got the mechanism to exercise the power. And that is love. When you exercise love over all the relationships that you have, you have the power. And nobody, but nobody has any power over you when you operate in a capital love. We covered that yesterday and the day before when you look at emotions and relationships. So go back and look at that. And then the third thing, one is the power. The next thing is how do you use the power? In love. And then you will have self-control and a sound mind. Because guess what? The only thing you need to control is yourself. And once you control yourself, you have power over everything outside of yourself. Isn't that a wonderful way to celebrate Shabbat? I just love it. That's why this is my favorite time. And the only time you get regenerated and, you know, cleared up and put back on course is when you stop every Shabbat and rest. Spend the first time of every Shabbat day whether you want to start at sunset Friday or you start early in the morning on Saturday, that's your business. But it must be spent, closeted, you alone. Not the cat, not the dog, not the husband, not the children, not the wife. They, they have got to be kept out. And if you can't keep them out in the waking hours, then you do this in the rare sleeping hours. I do this from 4 o'clock to 6. Never do this morning, not four o'clock or six. But I've been going yes last night until two. So I woke up at night this morning at about eight o'clock. And I says, Well, the next two hours, dog eat the stuff up at the show because that's when I should be preparing for the show. I said, No, sir, I have to use that time to close.
facet as self and get out of the directions. But what I'm going to tell you today, right? And then the emergence came up. I would have given time enough. But I have a client in residence. And my client requires a nurse. And at about nine o'clock, I got the news that the weekend nurse was sick and could not come. So I had to know, double up, I'm just wondering, how oh, come she don't come yet? Because my lady don't get her breakfast yet and blah, 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 blah. Well, I realized that she's sick. So now I start phoning her one time. I need another weekend nurse. Can you come? I have a cadre of nurses who work on my own clients because they have been trained by me so that they know exactly how to administer my program. Everybody has already started on their program for the day doing something else. Okay, I just remember the time for a break. When I come back, I just finish the story and go on to the meat of the matter today. Take another break. On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae to reggae.com it's got to be rearranged okay we're back again and i just love it i was telling you about this client and the nurse that come up well eventually i got a nurse but in the interim I realized, oh my goodness, I'm starving, the lady. So I just rush into the kitchen and just cut up some banana. And what else did I do? Banana. And then I had, oh, avocado. And then I had a raw salad. And then I had some pickup calorie. And I just made an open face sandwich. You know what that means? You just put a little thin slice of healthy okay, bit of bread. And then you just put all the pickup towel on top of it and just cut it up and serve it as an open face sandwich with a knife on top. Voila, beautiful. And then she had tea. The tea was garlic, ginger, moringa, and something else. Mint. So ginger, mint, garlic, moringa. Four bush. Well, the garlic is not a bush, it's a cloves. And I just mash up and put it in the pot. And the ginger are also mashed up in the pot. And then um, I just fix that up, throw the water over it, and voila, breakfast in five minutes. So everything else was prepared already in the um, fridge. So, wonderful. I'm a little late, but guess what? Today is my Shabbat. So my priority is serving and giving and enjoying the gifts that have been given to me. So that is how you need to, 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 to always um, celebrate your Shabbat. And so it's so important to do this. You have this for sure. God already know. So I want to like some other elements of enjoying. I want to just share with you some other Shabbats and how I deal with it. One Shabbat when I'm going to the beach, I'll come and tell you that activity and how I integrate it into my um, Shabbat. Because it is so important to always have that time. Understanding the culture of Shalom and understanding how to pursue the purpose of Shabbat. It is to one stop. You know, that is the same reason why you get sick. You will never get sick unless it's time for you to stop. The only time you get sick is when you have not been doing what you are supposed to be doing and you are like a runaway carriage down into illness. So, 
That is why sickness is a gift. You need to stop. Hmm. Marie, when I have a next break, bring my lipstick. Right? I need you to understand that you must stop. Notice what is happening. And then you need to do something about it. So the first thing about Shabbat is stop your activity. And then you're going to review what you have been doing. Then you have to reflect and see, is there something I need to change? Is there something I need to adjust? Is there something I need to drop? Is there something I need to take up? And that way, you, this is how the Shabbat rejuvenates you so that you make the adjustments and the changes. I always redo my timetable on the Shabbat. That means I do a new timetable every three months. Um, that is going to direct how I spend my time. And so usually in three months you have sort of gotten your mini goals together and also you, you know, the things around that have changed in your environment will require a change in your time and your timetable. So you can't spend a thing and say, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life every Monday at 2.30 to 4.30. Look here, the excitement of going through your purpose, the plan that they have in there for you is not to at the next break, but since you bring it down, let me bring it down. We have no time like in prison, right? I look in the mirror and see that my lips look in. Not just cherry, right? I don't like them. I can call it light and emotional. Wonderful. And don't mess up. I'm pressing lips together. Before you get the shape or the front and the bottom and then get mixed up. So you must always follow the line. Use a liner or a Right. And since we are on this, I want to just, you know, these things are dropped into my spirit for a reason. It's not just to digress. It is what I have to share with you. Because what I'm sharing with you is what is happening to me and how can you use it for your benefit. Since we are on to that, you know, when I leave here, we start the first day of first class of our 10 week fall family finishing school class. And it's going to run from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And you can call and join in on it at any time. It's every Shabbat from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And we cover things like how to make the most of your lips and how to, you know, do your skin to, and your hair and your clothing to cover your falls. See, I'm covering the flaps today. <laughs> and how to show your best foot forward. How to put your best foot forward. This is the best foot. Although it has some broken bones across here, so, it doesn't have the imperfections that I have on the other foot, as in Bunyan. So I always put this foot forward. You have to learn how to put your best foot forward all the time. What on earth are you exposing all the rules and folds in your body? Cover them. That's why I like this loose clothing. Everybody is imagining that under there is wonderful stuff. That's for them to imagine and for me to continue. Right. So, talking about the class that I'm having later, apart from the body, guess what? I forget my green drink today. So, I decided that I would still use my crop, my stem glass, to show you a little bit of what we're going to be doing in our class. We do 10 settings. How to know what we like to use and what fork to use and how to take the fork with the food that you now genteel and how to not to slurp and make noises at the table, how to have nice table conversation and 
Oh, to be here when I be me, eating chicken with your hand and a pickle with your fish. How to be comfortable in every social situation. So that when you are dining with the Governor General or the Queen of England, or you're just laying up on the beach in your brand name day, you are comfortable in all these areas. You know, have one stoosh and spooky speaking. You know how to conduct yourself in every situation. So join us. We have these courses three times a year, put on by CelebrateLife.com. And so you can email us or call in or what have you do. But go on my website and you will know how to contact me and how to be a part of this program. We are going to be doing it online. So not for this one, but for the next one. So that was an important side as we looked at the reviewing of my life because it's an important part Oops. to review. So, as I was saying, stop every Shabbat. You must stop no work. You must look and spend and speak and interact with your Creator so that you can download into your brain, into your spirit, into your body, into your mind, more parts of these details of the plan that he has for you. Remember that plan? The plan was before you were born because you were born with characteristics that he gave you to fit into the plan and be a solution. To be a mother of those two beautiful boys that you've been given. To be a, an example and a role model for so many people. Who wonder how you do it? Where do you get it in all of life? Where do you want to get that all Lord? And so I'm always up to whatever challenges this me every day of my life. But you have to stop one day a week and just do this rejuvenation process. Stop. Spend the first time with your creator. Then you go on to review, reflect again with a little time to you know, and then after you have done all the peripheral uh, foundational stuff, you move on to worshiping and celebrating the rest of the day. How do you worship and celebrate? You recognize who your creator is in all the gifts that he has given you, the gift of life, the gift of breath. The gift of health, the gift of provision and wealth and prosperity, the gift of peace. <sighs> oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. When you can be at peace when everybody is getting frazzled. <laughs> because the peace is a result of your learning to love yourself and to love everybody the way you love yourself. But you can't love everybody if you don't love yourself. And learning to love yourself has to do with accepting and embracing the love that your Creator has for you. How do you know what kind of love He has for you? Look in the book what He says about you. He says, first of all, you're like a chick, and I have you under my wings, protecting you. He says, you are like the apple of my eye, the most important thing. Nobody can touch you. Because as soon as anything comes towards you, I will let go down and cover it. Same thing with your creator. You see anything coming near to you? It just come like this. Like a shield. Right in front of you. But guess what? Some people don't know if you turn up and make the shield stay in front of you. So I put the shield up, you go on all, all your way. That's why you have to stop once a week. So that all the things he wants to bring and give to you. You can stop a while and take it. That's all you have to do. Stop and you receive it. Instead of running, 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 running. And guess what? He says, goodness and mercy shall follow you. So there it is, goodness and mercy, I run down behind you. But you have run so fast, it can't catch you. So you need to understand the importance of this Shalom Shabbat. 
you have to stop have a horticulturist. He is the best horticulturist in the world. You have to come and sit like that one day and going to put it on a whole photo thing. And you wait take another break. Sure. Every time we get excited about something, it's time to take a break. We're going to take a break. We're not coming back to talk about the garden. On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae to reggae dot com oh, oh, yeah. somehow i know things have got to change Ooh. hi i'm back and i was talking about my horticulture list right he read your heart and spirit horticulture among other things i do me and I remember when I went to somebody's house and saw him, I said, wow, you good. So I said, can you come and give me one day a week? And he said, well, I have to sort and fit it in. So one day he came and did a day with me. Oh my goodness. Fixed up all the indoor plants, like this one. And then he did the outdoor plants. And he knew where to put what, where. I have a hundred five gallon buckets. Each one of them have in a tree, a plant, or a what I call a dish garden. It's called a bucket garden, right? Complete because I have a routine in the yard and I don't know where to plant anything. So I just plant up the whole yard and when I finish, I get these buckets. And some of them that are too tall, I cut them, so I make two buckets. And so I have two large planters. I plant all my stuff in there, put herbs in there, and I put trees in them, I put flowers in them, I put all my grasses in them, like, you know, I put lemon grass, and I put scallion in them, and I put tomatoes in them. And I... So nobody can come and tell me. I don't care which makes plant. I have everything in them. The beans in them, but now the beans are run all over the place and all the neighbors' trees and everything else. We can't have enough space, but guess what? Everybody can get some of it. Hmm. So, a hard cut of this. Why did I mention it? Because he said to me, Well, I have to. I said, How, how many pieces did you work? He said, 70 of I said, mm, Tap it right now. I said, If you want to tap my day, you want to tap my day. But you must not work seven days. You have to stop one day. I said, You have any children? Yes, you know what, child? I said, no. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You will stop that day, spend it with the Creator and your children and your family. Right? And he started to do that. Guess what? Every now and then come and have a call. <coughs> or, he said, I'm not feeling good. I said, excuse me, you are not feeling I said, why are you not feeling on top of the world? I said, did you work on your day of rest? Well, I had to do it. I said, move right along. So anytime you sick, it's because you don't stop and regenerate. And that is the best way. Because remember, you know, prevention better than cure. Because it only takes this, what I'm saying, a ounce of prevention is 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 equal to a Oh, without 10 pounds of cure, can you compare an ounce to 10 pounds? That is how it is when you don't take preventive care of yourself. So make sure you take the Sabbath, right? I'm on the wine, you don't know. So, review, stop. Review what you did good, what you did bad, how you need to adjust. Reflect, think back. And anytime you think back, and remember this, good old days, enjoy the memories 
But as you enjoy the memories, remember what your creator said all in the old days. He says your latter end shall be great and honor. That means that tomorrow is going to be better than today. And today was better than yesterday. And I am here to tell you, unless you accept that, then you will always be complaining about, ah, what did Jamaica come into? What did the world come into? Because you have not learned to embrace the fact that today is better than yesterday, tomorrow is better than today, will be better than today. And that brings me to the point that I was making at the beginning about the tiger, lion, animal over here. So, that you can make your own reality. You don't have to react to the realities that face you, that everybody else is having. You can respond from a spiritual standpoint by creating your own reality. I create my own reality. Every moment of every day, when I see X and I want B, I speak A over it. I act A over it. I do A over it. I think A over it. I get the word of A into brain over it. I mumble and I mumble. Listen to me. Many times I I have abundant help. I bounce on my rebound of jumping or on my bounce back chair, sitting, and I go, I have abundant health. Ah, and the pain I me, I have abundant health. I have abundant health. And I do that hundreds of times. Until the pain is gone. There are several reasons why the pain goes. One, neuro-linguistic programming. I have used my neuro, I've used my linguistics, my mouth, to program my neuro, my mind, it is God called, you shall have what you say, speaking into me. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. But in addition to that, I make sure I have a lot of water, and then I go and do lymphatic drainage, which is what bouncing is, and the water dilutes the inflammation or infection, which is what causes all pain and then the bouncing moves it from the place where it is into the lymph nodes and out along with the water from the lymph nodes into the eliminatory organs to come out as sweat, to come out as urine, to come out as feces, to come out as mucus drains. And voila, oh, to come out as carbon dioxide. <laughs> <sighs> breathing out and voila it has to go because you are using every law you are using the physical law you are using the psychological law and you are using the physical law and remember what we said yesterday about when you bounce you stimulate the production of your what's it name again endorphins you know and it comes out in your brain stem and then <laughs> You know, the car bumps and goes up. You have to start giggling. You ever notice when a child jumps up and down like that in the bed? They have to start giggling because all the endorphins are coming out into the system. And those are what you call the feel good hormone. Huh? Did you know that you could do that? It doesn't matter what happened. That is why I have a little bump and a bump back here inside my house and another one outside the house. So anytime when I get it up and anything happened, <laughs> any crisis happened, something crisis happened, boom, 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 I just start to jump. And it has to dissipate because I'm using all the rules of nature. That's how you worship and celebrate the gifts that have been given to you on the Shabbat. And let me tell you something at the end of my Shabbat, Lord have mercy. Wild horses can't hold me back. That is why when I go to church on Sunday, 
make dance of a star right along the whole church, around the whole church, and carry the flower wearing, and the poop and lick, and all them things. I cannot contain myself after I have had such a wonderful time on Shabbat. So that is my rejuvenation day. That is my day of stop. To review, reflect, and then celebrate. And so the rest of my Shabbat, after I had that time with my creator and got the direction set, he spent visiting my friends, going to the beach, doing this program, having a wonderful time, going and shopping, helping out my friends with this. Um, sort of different things, but I have a wonderful time. And so I invite you to come and join me. Please come and join me so that we can have one of those times when you just can't compare any of it. You know, it's, it's, it's so poignant, you can't even describe it. It is so enjoyable. You just revel in it. That's what I want for your Shabbat to be. And every Shabbat in your life. Remember, you don't have to take it on Saturday, you take it on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, but you've got to take it. Right? Remember, man was not made for the Shabbat. The Shabbat was made for man. You must use it. Remember how those religious people talk about it. Why are you healing people on the Sabbath? The Sabbath, you're supposed to be sitting in the synagogue and you're supposed to be following the million what you call the rules of the Jewish rules of white. Some book have that name, so they the Jewish book of white, and it said you can't break off toilet paper on the Sabbath. You have to roll them into little squares and put them down on the side. So all you do is just take them up. I told one <laughs> the Shabbat elevator. That's the next thing, the Shabbat elevator. On the Sabbath in Israel, they have a Shabbat elevator. And if this building only has one elevator, then the elevator stops on every floor. It, because you're not supposed to do any work. What is work? Punching the button. So anytime I have a hotel in Israel, I make sure it's a hotel that have two elevators. Because if I want to go down, from the 15th floor on Shabbat. I have to wait and this elevator stop at every floor where the people coming in our home. Guys, so it program for Shabbat. Take sort of losing rules. Gone out with the dark ages. How are we to spend our Shabbat? Stop. Get directions from your creator. Two. Refuse. Three. Reflect or worship and celebrate. And so I want to just encourage you. If you miss part of the others, you can just be going and do what you mean want today, right? Where you just decide, okay, I'm going to just take this hour and I'm going to take 10 minutes to review. I am going to take, no, I'm going to take 10 minutes to get direction. And then I take another 10 minutes to review and reflect. And that's just 20 minutes. And the other 40 minutes. I'm taking it from 60 minutes, which kind of work. The other 40 minutes, I'm going to do my job for all this. You call up all your friends and say, Oh, I love you, honey. You know you're such a wonderful thing in my life. Get your daughter and your children and all your family. You just love them and you just enjoy them. And that's the best way to enjoy your show. So today, as I know, I'm going to leave you with. The ironic lesson, right? And then after I have done it, I'm going to explain it. A lot of people hear it all the time, over and over and over, and they don't know what it means. But this is what it is. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. Blessing you is the goodness and mercy that follows you every day of your life. You cannot access it unless you stop. 
so we can catch up. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. That means his favor is towards you. And if you are not in the place where you are in his presence, you cannot access his favor. And remember, the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. That is now the abundance that he showers upon you continuously. And grant you his shepherd. His love which is showered upon you so that you can show his love that you have embraced for others. That is how you have shepherd. Everything perfect, upright, and perfect. Nothing is in you. Nothing broken. Shalom. Shalom. Somehow I know it's got to be rearranged. Oh, yo, oh, oh, my eye. Ooh, I, 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 Since the first